This is part 4 of Blazor tutorial. In this video and in our upcoming videos, we'll discuss everything you need to know to create effective and reusable ASP.NET Core Razor components. Blazor is a component-driven framework, meaning components are the fundamental building blocks of a Blazor application. They can be nested, reused, and if implemented properly, can even be shared across multiple projects. Component files have the extension .razor. So maybe for this reason, the terms Razor components and Blazor components are used interchangeably and they usually refer to the same thing. Component file names must start with an uppercase character. If you add a component file that starts with a lowercase character, the code will fail to compile and you'll get an error stating component names cannot start with a lowercase character. Now, take a look at this counter component that we got out of the box when we created this Blazor server project. As you can see, it's a combination of two things. On the top here, we have the HTML, which represents the user interface of this component. And then here, we have the c -sharp code that contains the component's processing logic. Every time this button is clicked, we want to call this increment count function. And this is wired up using this on click attribute. So every time this button is clicked, this function is called and this function increments this private variable value by one. And then to access this variable value within the HTML, we prefix the variable name with this at character. At the moment, this is how the counter component is rendered by the browser. Notice this static text current count. Let's say we want to change the font style of this text. One way to do this is by including the style attribute on the paragraph element and then set font family to something else like monotype Corsiva. Reload the page. The new font family is applied as expected. At the moment, we have hard-coded the font family name within the HTML right here. Instead, let's say we want to retrieve this value from a variable. So we create a private variable of type string. Let's call the variable font family. To retrieve this variable value from within the HTML, use the at character. Notice we also have IntelliSense. We still see the same font family. Now let's change this to something else, maybe Vardana. There we go. The new font family is applied as expected. The point that I'm trying to make is to access the variable values from within the HTML, simply prefix the variable name with at character. This is one way binding. Blazor also supports two-way binding. We'll discuss data binding in detail in our upcoming videos. c -sharp code is included in this at code block. It's also possible to have more than one code blocks. When this application is compiled, the HTML and c -sharp code are converted into a component class. The name of the generated class matches the name of the component file. Remember, the component file name must start with an uppercase character. Otherwise, you will get a compiler error. Notice, every time we click this button, the counter value is incremented by one and we see the updated value without the entire page being refreshed. Remember, Blazor server project runs on the server. A signal R connection is established between the server and the client browser. After the counter component is initially rendered and when the user clicks the button, the information about the click event is sent to the server over the SignalR connection. In response to the event, the component is regenerated, but then the entire HTML is not sent back to the client. It's only the diff, that is the difference in the render tree. In this case, the new counter value that is sent to the client browser. Since only the changed part of the page is updated, instead of reloading and updating the entire page, the application feels faster and more responsive to the user. Notice the page directive of this counter component is set to slash counter. This means one way to get to this counter component is by navigating to slash counter in the URL. Remember, 
components can be nested inside other components. At the moment, when we navigate to the root application URL, we see the index component. Let's nest counter component inside this index component. Index component is also present in the pages folder. To nest the counter component inside this index component, we use the HTML syntax like this. In fact, let's include two instances of the counter component. Notice, as expected, we have two counter component instances. Components can be placed anywhere within a Blazor project. It's a good practice to place components that produce web pages in the pages folder. In this example, all these components, index, fetch data, and counter, produce web pages, so they are placed in the pages folder. On the other hand, reusable non page components are usually placed in the shared folder. If you want to, you can place all these components in a completely different custom folder within your project. Remember, a Razor component is a combination of two things, HTML markup and c -sharp code. In this example, both the HTML and c -sharp code are present in a single file. This is fine for a simple component like this counter component. For a more complex component, it is usually a good practice to separate HTML and c -sharp code into their own respective files. It's not only good from maintenance standpoint, it's also easy to unit test. There are two approaches to split component HTML and c -sharp code into their own respective files, partial files approach and base class approach. We'll discuss both these approaches with examples in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.